So I was trying to avoid making this video because the person it's about has desperately wanted me to make a video about them for a while now, tweeting me for months, asking me to chat with them, and then when I finally did, repeatedly saying, when's it going up? Why won't you upload our chat? You're clearly embarrassed about it. Talk about me, talk about me, talk about me, and just tweeting me like a madman. He even sent me this the other day. If you keep being hostile to my faith, and carry on hate preaching, you're gonna let my lion side come out. A lot of you have probably guessed who this is about, but if you don't know, Ali Dawa is a Muslim internet celebrity who is basically famous for stalking Tommy Robinson, arguing with Jada Franzen from Britain First, and more recently, debating people like yours truly. Normally, I would not like to encourage the idea that obsessively tweeting me will get me to make a video about you, but Ali has put in such a consistent effort and really just made a colossal meme of himself lately that I, I just can't help it. So here we go. A few months ago, when I was in the UK, I ran into Ali Dawa and decided to have a conversation. The reason it was never uploaded on my channel, despite Ali's constant begging, is A, he had already uploaded the video on his own channel, and B, it was such a mess of indirect, boring, disingenuous Takiya answers that I just didn't really think it was great content. But if people want to see the whole debate anyway, you can go watch it in the link below. Now, if you don't know what Takiya is, it is an Islamic practice of being deceptive in order to get the upper hand, or lying about one's religion in the face of strong criticism or a culture that is generally against it. It's mostly practiced under Shia Islam, but is also permitted in Sunni Islam. Now, I'm not saying all Muslims do this. But throughout this video, you will start to see why I think Ali Dawa, in particular, is being disingenuous as all heck when he talks to me about his beliefs. So we start the debate with Ali refusing to shake my hand because I'm a woman. Uh, not legally, but that's that's a long story for another time. So Ali, you've repeatedly contacted me on Twitter. Uh, you've wanted to talk for a while. It's good to finally meet yeah. you. First things first. Will you shake my hand? Uh, no. <laughs> no, you won't shake my hand. Why not? Now, clearly I was being a bit cheeky when I asked him to shake my hand because I was trying to make a point. The point being that even basic cultural greeting standards within the West are not permissible within Islam, which at the very least indicates there's some level of discussion to be had about the compatibility of this religion and European culture, certainly as more and more Muslims come into Europe and become a larger voting bloc. From this topic, we sprung into his explanation for not shaking my hand and the idea of imposing Islamic values on women and different cultures and different nations. Because we just believe that interaction is for your husband or your father or your brother. And just the way the Orthodox Jews have that belief as well. Right. I, res I respect that. But like, for example, if I say to you, I have a belief where you need to touch my toe. If I say to you, Lauren, can you touch my toe, please? You might set, find out a bit like, I prefer not to. If I say that's my culture. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, I actually agree with you. I yeah. think it's totally fine that you have those uh, beliefs and that you behave in that way. However, you are aware you are in England right now where yeah. shaking one's hand is seen as a sign of greeting and yeah. respect. Yeah. No, no, of course, you're right. Now, for example, just because I'm in England, that doesn't matter. I obey the law of the land. For example, I try to stay away from crime, yeah? I try to obey the law of the land as much as I can to the best of my ability. Why? Because like I showed my passport when I confronted Tony Robinson, is that that passport is an agreement with me and this British government that I'll obey the law of the land. I'm not going to go and do what these maniacs do, run people over, or, or whatever it may be. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I'm here to obey the law of the land. I'm here to live in peace, side by side, by you, and have an interaction with you and talk to you. And like you see today, for example, we're here to interact with people and live in harmony. We're not here just because I live in this land. This doesn't mean that you impose your ideas or I impose my ideas on you. If I come and say to you, Lauren, why are you wearing a hijab? You're going to say, Ali, first you might say, look, this is my country. But if we was in, let's say, Dubai, yeah? I'm not going to come and say, Lauren, why are you not wearing a hijab? That's your choice. He goes over this one point repeatedly, that we, as in the Muslim community, would never make you wear a hijab. We'd all live in peace with our own separate values, 
even if there were an Islamic Orthodox majority voting in our laws. Let's, let's suppose, for example, not that we're going to impose, we're going to have our own way of lifestyle, for example, that we live. We're not going to come and say, you be like this, because we're living under the British rule. Why wouldn't you? When you were 51% of the population no, no, and you can if, vote in your government, look, why wouldn't if, you? If, let's suppose if that happened, what's, what's, what's going to change? Do you think we're going to come and start saying, you will have your rights? Look, like I said before, Christian Jews and Muslims live together. The Jews can live their lifestyle. The Christians, you drink alcohol, you drink alcohol, no problem. You do, that's your lifestyle. We're seeing, this is what we follow. You want to follow that? Yes, but follow. what about when you... And it all sounds very, very lovely. No one would be against a perfect world like that, I suppose. But there are two big things to point out here. One, Ali speaks of Muslims in the term we, even though it is demonstrably true that not all Muslims agree with Ali on this. In fact, according to Pew Research, the majority of Muslims worldwide believe in making Sharia, so Islamic law, the law of the country that they live in, which is very much so imposing one's belief on others, especially when of those people who want Sharia, a large amount believe in the death penalty for leaving their religion. And also, my, my second point here, I'm not entirely sure Ali agrees with the idea of not imposing one's values on others either. Because just for example, if it's my choice how I present myself, Ali, and you would never force me into a hijab, then why are you putting me in a bloody hijab on your Twitter timeline? He literally blurred my freaking shoulders out when tweeting a picture of me because they're showing too much skin. I always thought the whole don't show ankle thing was just a joke, but apparently not. And while this seems very silly, there's, there's a reason I'm pointing it out. Ali chose to cover me up, despite me choosing not to cover my shoulders in that photo, because he is in control of his Twitter. So when I ask multiple times in this discussion what happens when Islamic values become the majority view in Europe, and Ali simply says, well, I guess that would just be democracy. We're not going to come and say, you be like this, because we're living under the British rule. Why wouldn't you? When you were 51% of the population no, no, and you if, can vote in your government, look, why wouldn't if, you? If, if, now, well, to be honest, then that, suppose that's, that's democracy, isn't it? That but I promise we would never impose on you. I'm a little skeptical, especially when he says he is Muslim first and British second. Would you say that you are a Muslim first, or would you say you are British first? I've said that to Tommy before. I'm a Muslim first and I'm a British. And that's my problem with you, yeah. ultimately. That's my problem. Why? Because I think that the Muslim community here has a far higher allegiance to their in-group than they do to overall European culture, British culture, the idea of the UK. I think they have a far greater allegiance to their own religion and their own values. I'm sorry, Ali, but showing shoulders and even nudity is a long-standing expression within European culture. I'm not talking about degeneracy for the sake of degeneracy, but I certainly don't want to live in a Europe where Ali Dawa takes charge and throws a burqa over Venus de Milo or blurs out Botticelli's Primavera. Just not an ideal future at all. Now, one of my favorite parts of this conversation was when Ali swore to me that no-go zones just don't exist. And if they did, he would condemn it and see it as an issue that must be solved within his community. As someone who is Christian, I wouldn't go and move to a Muslim-majority country because I don't think I'd fit very well there. And I don't think I would be creating areas of just Christians, no-go zones, where Muslims couldn't come into and practice their faith no such in a Muslim nation. There's no such thing as no-go zones, because I've been there. You've been to no-go zones in, in the yes, UK? absolutely. I would be happy to walk with you and just really see if there's no-go no zone areas, because if they really are, that means, I'll say, Lauren, you know what, this is a problem with our community. Right. We need to fix that, because this is, what do you mean no-go zone area? How could Lauren not walk through this area? In fact, he stated, come back to the UK and I will show you that these areas don't exist. I'll give you the uh, no-go zone tour. So I would say, you know what, Lauren, come back in a month's time, let's fix this problem, because how could you dare to sell you just because you are not a Muslim to tell you can't walk through that zone? Well, Ali, I can't really come back to the UK, can I? Uh, maybe because I was banned for making a joke a social experiment about your religion. A ban I thought would only happen in no-go zones, but it appears the whole damn country has become a no-go zone that imposes archaic Islamic blasphemy laws. And this really wouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't be blaming you for it in any way or trying to do a gotcha. But when this happened, did you come out and defend me and say, 
This is a Western nation where criticism and even mockery of Islam has been allowed for ages, and therefore we must uphold those values of free speech instead of trying to impose our religious laws on it. No, of course you didn't. You went on to celebrate my ban. Thank God this hate-preaching woman got banned from UK. Stay out of our country, Lauren Southern. This is why I think you are disingenuous, Ali, because you say you want to show me no-go zones aren't real, you say you don't want to impose your beliefs on others, then you cheer on my ban from a country that occurred because people in a Muslim majority area complained about my free speech. That is a real quick change of heart there. Or just the Kia. But I guess Ali never really believed in free speech anyway. In fact, he made it apparent during our discussion that he believes in the idea of hate speech and that hate speech should not just be illegal, but is the cause of terrorism. He was yesterday in Luton giving out leaflets. I would have been like, that means like I seek refuge in God Almighty from Satan. He's saying Allah is gay. This is hate preaching. This is what Anjum Chowdhury and ISIS does. What is the difference but between you have free that? speech in this country? It's different than let's, let's you have free speech here. We don't have blasphemy laws. I mean, no, the course, local people yes, try to enforce yes, them yes. and they no, no, get the police no. to come over and try to arrest Tommy and to take away his leaflets. Thank but, you. So, no, but they're doing a good thing. They're doing a good thing. Because if they did the same thing to and they're doing a brilliant thing. You know why? Because this is what we get confused a bit. Freedom of speech and hate speech, yeah? There's a big difference. If I came and said today, right now, I hate the Jews and what Hitler did was beautiful. Is that freedom of speech or hate speech? It's freedom of speech. That's hate speech. That's the difference what maybe you don't know wrong. But That's hate speech it. and free speech are That's the same thing. No, They're the no, same no, thing. No, 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 They're both speech that should be allowed. I don't think you should be allowed to do things where you say, I'm going to go kill someone and Why? plan That's to freedom. kill someone. Right, so I'm going to use your argument. That's no, 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 because that is, a, that is a criminal act because you intend to do something that would no, violate no, no, someone's no, no, life no, or no, property. No, but what if I said, not directly, I said, you know what? It would be good if, you know, these non-Muslims didn't exist. It's my freedom of speech, you know, I'm not saying you should do it, but mm, they should that's, that's an opinion. If you're saying you that's, don't want to do it, then no, fine. No, but that's hate speech. That is the that reason. That is hate speech. Yeah. Let me, let, me, let me tell you why I mean. We might have a different opinion, yeah? Here, we have hate speech laws, yeah? Okay, so now when Tommy Robinson says, why Muslims kill for Islam and don't bring a single verse, and Darren Osborne reads that book or goes on iPad and watches his videos and says, you know what, these people are out here to kill us. And there's these attacks that have happened. So I need to take the matters into my own hands. So what happens is that hate speech, just a speech, it's just a speech, causes some man to take action into his own hands, same way as ISIS and these people who run over innocent men, women and children. What do they do? They watch ISIS videos and be like, these kuffar, they look like they're killing us, they're doing this, and they think, mm, yeah, they're right, they're after us. What, what should I do? Take the matter in my own hands and I'll run people over on London Bridge. Both are, uh, let me put it like this, yeah? Tommy Robinson, ISIS, and Anjum Chowdhury, Ch Ch and Abu Halima, they're on that side. We, the British public, we're here, and we're the ones suffering. We're getting killed. Friends Park, Muslims got run over. How many times non-Muslims got run over in the bridges? Why? Because of hate speech. This is just a poor argument. Ali is conflating posters which say Allah is gay as a joke social experiment with ISIS literally telling people to go and kill the infidel, go out and murder the kafir. This makes no sense. These are clearly two very different things. One, a joke, just an expression of an opinion or a statement, whatever you want to call it. The other, a clear indication of wanting to commit a crime and asking others to commit a crime. An act I already condemned in our debate and an act that is very illegal. It can be really easy to confuse people and to trick them into believing in this notion of hate speech by talking about ISIS propaganda and then encompassing everything else you disagree with under that same umbrella. And I find it bizarre that Ali is making this argument because many people within the Islamic community, within liberal spheres, they always make the argument that despite many terrorists claiming they are inspired by Islam, the Quran and Islamic teachings are not responsible because people decide to interpret them the wrong way. So if, if that's true, why is Tommy Robinson responsible for terrorism if people interpret him wrong? Why am I responsible for hate preaching if people interpret me wrong? I could just as easily turn around and say the Quran is hate speech, Ali. It's all about who defines it. And that's the fundamental problem with the idea of hate speech. You've got things over here, like 
planning terrorism, which lead to demonstrable actions that impose on other people's rights and lives and property over here, which are illegal. And then you've got hate speech, which are terms that can be broadly interpreted. And therefore, it could be pretty much anything. And that's why you need to put that under free speech as well. Or you could be censoring very important opinions. Free speech and debate is a long-standing value of Western civilizations. And if you don't like that, go live in an Islamic country because they sure as heck don't have a lot of it there. Now, just to end this video off, I, I have to address this last little nuclear hot take from Ali because throughout his Twitter storm, He's really been trying to get me in these gotcha tweets, trying to catch me in some sort of hypocrisy. And his last attempt was very bizarre. It was regarding the YouTube shooting where he tweeted me, the shooter at YouTube headquarters was a woman. I would like at Lauren underscore Southern to condemn this act as a female and do more to stop her fellow hate-filled females to stop this. Hashtag taste of your own medicine, love from UK. Now clearly with this tweet, he's trying to get at my criticisms of Islam and how I generally associate it with terrorism. That's why he's doing the whole hashtag taste of your own medicine thing. The only issue with this is, A, I have never once said you and all your fellow hate-filled Muslims must condemn this when terrorism occurs or say you must solve this. I simply point out a growing trend of self-admitted inspiration from Islamic teachings among terrorists, and that maybe we ought to consider how this religion is popularly interpreted, and if that popular interpretation is compatible with Western civilization as a whole. And B, probably the more important point here, how is being a female and being a Muslim even remotely comparable? Female is not an ideology. You are born female. It is a gender. It is not a set of doctrines and scripts. As Shuan had put it, people who follow radical ideologies were not born with them, you absolute spoon. People are born male or female. It would make sense if Lauren was someone who talked only about the shooters being male, but I don't, which makes this gotcha very silly. Not to mention, uh, least of all, C, I absolutely do condemn what this woman did. No problem there. Ali, looking at your Twitter timeline, it seems like you have a, a rough time in the Twitter sphere lately trying to get your gotchas to land. And I don't think your view of the world and a lot of non-Muslims view of the world and criticisms of your religion are very compatible. And if you would like, I would be totally willing to pay for a one-way ticket for you to go off to an Islamic country of your choice, which should be a fantastic offer because you've told me quite confidently that under Islam, it is a multicultural paradise where everyone just lives in harmony. It's a misconception that you have here yeah, is when we, when the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him was in full power, the Christians and look, look at look at history. Yeah, there's I can't reference off my head. Like I have memorized this well. Yeah, there was a lot of Jews saying that when we lived under Islamic rule, we were not being persecuted finally from the Christians. We were living in harmony. The Christians and the Jews and the Muslims live in harmony. This is your area. You want to live there? You want to sell alcohol? Do, no problem. They lived in harmony. I look, do some research. Or you can do what I expect you to do and reject my offer because we both know living under Islam is not a multicultural paradise of harmony and happiness and respecting women. We both know the reality of these countries and we both know the West is a heck of a lot better, even with all its flaws and imperfections, which is why you'll never leave it and which is why I'll never stop fighting for the values that made it great, even if it does bring out your hashtag emoji lion side. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you next time.